Welcome to a new video in my home automation series. I have received a few new goodies uh, from Sonoff to review. I would say new products, but I, I don't think that's uh, necessarily true in this particular case, because uh, what I have here now is the POW Release 2, which I believe it's been on the market for some time, so it's not exactly a new model. And I have done a review of the original POW, and if you don't know that, that is the smart switch from the Sonoff range which allows you to monitor the power consumption of whatever device which is uh, connected to it. And the difference that I can tell between Release 1 and the Release 2 model, because obviously from the outside appearance they look uh, pretty much alike, they use the same case, but that's not really a um, you know, big difference because they are using this type of case for uh, quite a few of their new products. But going back to the differences, the one thing that the Release 2 can provide is uh, that you can set some triggers based on power usage or power consumption. Most specifically, you should be able to use this device to automatically turn off if the power being drawn is above a certain wattage. So it offers a few automation options uh, within this, well, within the device itself. Uh, because in the previous model, we, if you remember that video, when you try to set up a scene, you can only set up a trigger based on whether the device goes on and off. So you couldn't use the power consumption for the automation. You can only use the power consumption just to, yeah, just to look at and monitor how much power that your device is using. So hopefully that is going to change that. Now I've completed the installation of the Sonoff POW Release 2 which is this one, and I've also installed it besides the old POW that I, I got probably about two years ago, which is this one. And um, I've gone into the app, I've done the pairing, the linking and everything, so it's just, you know, fo follow the normal procedure, there's nothing special about that. And I've gone into both devices and I updated them to the latest firmware. So this is the, the, the new POW, and as you can see, it's running 3.3.1. But then I have gone back to my other POW, which had a different layout. It would definitely had a different screen. I can go back to my old videos. And I've done the update on this one as well. And this has updated to release 3.3.1 as well. And it looks like that they have the identical features. So um, I'm getting quite confused now. Maybe my old model was released too as well, because if I look at the model, it says POW underscore release 2. And if I go to my the new actual release to that I've just received a week ago um, that says just POW. So um, maybe I never had a, the original release one model. But so they seem to be working exactly the same way and they have the exact same features. So let's look at how the new POW or the new firmware looks like. And by the way, I'm just using my fan again just to test this uh, device out. So the screen has slightly changed. You have the main on-off button in the middle. When you turn it on and off, the background also changes. And as you turn it on, you can see the numbers uh, starting to appear. So you have uh, watts with two digits. You have the amps, again, with two decimal places. And you also have the voltage. And when you turn it off, they all go to zero. So first, let's go through the, uh, the basic features, uh, get them out of the way first, and we can talk about the power measurement. Sharing is the usual functionality. You can share this device with other users so your family members can have multiple accounts. You can share the device so they can also control them. Schedules, you can set different time and date where the device should turn on or turn off, whether it should you know, repeat in any particular fashion. And as you can see, you can only control whether the device should be on and off. So there is no other settings here. The timer functionality is something where you switch the device on and you set up, for example, these default off timers where, let's say, I want the device to automatically turn off after one hour. But that's something that you have to manually trigger. You also have the loop timer, which you can use to set up an on-off cycle, like a continuous on-off cycle. So again, uh, some of my viewers suggested that would be ideal for, you know, some pumps or some other things where you, you know, continuously need to run a device in a, let's say, 10 minutes every hour. So that's you can do in the loop timer. And let me also go into the settings, just go back into the settings, because here we also see a few new features. So first of all, you can set an electricity rate. There is no 
um, currency for it. So it's basically just the number. So I guess this gets multiplied with the uh, with kilowatt hours usage. So that's 50 Hungarian forints. I think that's how roughly I pay for the normal peak electricity. Um, and the rest of the settings are the same. So you have the land switch mode. You can uh, set whether the on time state is on and off or resume the last previous state. You can disable the network indicator. You also have the inching functionality or so the auto off functionality that uh, is available for most of the devices. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's talk about the power measurement. Normally, the way you operate the device is you turn it on and then it will continuously monitor the, the power, the amps and the voltage. And um, uh, if you look at the screen, it looks like that it gets updated every three, four seconds or so. So if I, so this fan has two settings. If I turn it up to the higher setting and then we just wait for a few seconds, then we will see that the power rises above. So it's about 24 and a half watts. So that's the difference between the low and the high settings on this fan. And then we have two other functions here. So if you click on the volts, the amps, or the, uh, the wattage, nothing really happens. So those, those are just static displays. But now we have two more buttons uh, just below the main on our switch. First one is the statistics, which I think they have changed quite a bit because previously you had a watch where you can start and stop a timer. So you can just set a, a start and an end time. And then in between, it will calculate the the consumption in kilowatt hours separately from uh, from another measurement which the device was doing automatically and it would give you the the kilowatt hour uh, consumption every single day and i think you could go back to a couple of months i'm just using this fan so i think this fan would need to run for hours and days to produce um, like a meaningful kilowatt hour consumption i was running this as you can see yeah just for five minutes and Within five minutes, this fan is not consuming more than you know, 0.01 kilowatt hour. So you don't see anything here, but that's the place you would come to you know, see how much your device is using in a, in a certain amount of time. And then the new feature is about the OPS. So that's this um, sort of like alarm button that you see here. You have four parameters that you can set. OPS stands for Overload Protection System. So you can set a minimum power, you can set a maximum power, and a maximum current, and the maximum voltage. I don't understand why they have picked these four uh, things. Uh, well, first of all, current and voltage, I mean, they are pretty much the same thing. Um, it really, it's up to you how you want to define the, like, sort of the peak consumption, whether you want it as a power or a, as a current. But for example, what I can do is I can set this to 23 watts because what we have seen is that when I put it in the high mode it, it draws 24 watts. So I'm going to say that I want an over voltage sorry over power protection or maximum power protection uh, at 23 watts and maybe I also want a minimum protection at 5 watts and just we are going to see what the minimum power means. And of course you can set a voltage as well. I mean the, the where I live the voltage doesn't fluctuate a lot but if you are I don't know, maybe you're living in a rural community where the voltage can drop down, or actually if the voltage can rise above a certain thing, then you can use this to protect your devices. So I'm just going to confirm that. Unfortunately, you don't see anything on the screen, so you, it doesn't going to give you an indication that uh, the overprotection or the overpower protection is, is on. But because we have set a protection on the max current, what is going to happen now? If I turn this on to full power, it should turn it automatically off. And it did. So it is definitely working. Again, you have to wait for a couple of seconds because there is obviously like a sampling cycle, how the, uh, the unit measures voltage. It's obvious it's not continuous. There is some sort of frequency. So once the power reaches that limit when it, the sample is being taken, then obviously it's going to turn off. And if I turn the device on now, well, it's going to get turned off almost immediately. So there is just a couple of second delay. So talking about the minimum power, I couldn't really figure out what that is for. So if I move this back to you know low setting, if I turn it, try to turn it on. So what you see here now is that it got automatically turned off. And the reason for that, I suspect, because 
as I said, this device is probably taking samples, uh, the power measurement samples, let's say every second. And with devices such as this one, for example, motors or, for example, uh, switch mode power supplies, there is always, a, you know, a big sort of like in, I think it's called the inrush current. So whenever it starts up, then it's going to draw a, a large amount of power for a very short amount of time. You probably have noticed that when you uh, plug in your laptop power supply, sometimes there is a spark because those switching power supplies, they also take, uh, there is like a, a very short burst of uh, energy when they are powering up. And the same thing happens here. So if you happen to turn on the device when it is sampling at the exact time when there is this, you know, high in rush power usage or current, then it's going to sample that and then say, oh, okay, th there is this really high consumption. I'm going to turn the device on. But in fact, in this particular case, the motor is just spinning up. And then this is why it is uh, drawing so, you know, a high amount of power in the beginning, which could be only like for half a second. So if I try turning this device on again, so now, as you can see, I managed to catch sort of a timing where these two events didn't collide. And as you can see, I think it's really unfortunate because uh, I would think that you would want to protect devices such as motors um, when, they get, when they stall. But if the timing is wrong, the device, you know, the switching off a motor can cause the device to automatically trigger the over power protection and, and shut it down. So I think you have to play quite a lot with it just to make sure it works reliably. And I, it might even happen that sometimes it's just going to turn your device off. Again, if, if it's that sort of device which has a, has a high initial power consumption. But now it works fine. You see, if we have come across that initial hurdle, now the, you know, the power is stable 16, sorry, 17, 18 watts. Again, if I put it back to the maximum speed, it's going to turn it off reliably. So that works fine. So that's, that's my comment about the Max uh, power protection. And again, you have to take it with a pinch of salt. And unfortunately nowadays, we have more and more devices with uh, uh, such feature, like, like motors tend to work that way. Even LED bulbs, which mostly have uh, switching power supplies, they behave the same way. So the other feature I wanted to test is the minimum power setting. So the fan is set to low speed at the moment, so I'm just going to turn it on. So it spins up, it starts drawing the 16, 17, 18, whatever watts. And now I'm going to turn it off using the switch on the fan. And so the wattage should go drop down to zero or close to zero now. And I think we just have to wait for a few seconds to uh, until it happens. Sometimes I notice that the, you know, the, the readings don't update for uh, probably that was like 10 seconds now. But eventually it dropped down to zero power or zero watts at the moment. And as you can see, the, uh, the minimum power protection kicked in and it actually turned off the device. And this is what I pretty much expected as well. I'm trying to give you another example how you can use this minimum and the maximum powers. So let's say you have an irrigation system and you have a pump which is pumping water to the sprinklers. So in the... Uh, if everything is going right and there is like water in your, for example, in your well and it can pump the water and then it goes out in the sprinklers, let's say it, it draws about 200 or 300 watts. If something happens with your sprinkler heads and they get blocked and the water doesn't go out, then the pump is going to struggle because it's pumping water against, uh, it, you know, just water because the water doesn't go anywhere. Then most probably the power consumption is going to go up. So you can use the max setting to uh, cater for that scenario and if it you know goes above a certain threshold you want to turn it off because there is something wrong with the sprinklers but also the same could happen with the minimum one because let's say the the float valve is is stuck closed or there is a there is an air bubble in the in the pipe which is going down to the well so it's not able to pick up the water from the from the well which means that the pump is going to run, run dry that means that the, uh, the consumption is going to go down. So again, you can use the minimum power setting to protect that. And if the, the pump is only drawing, let's say 150 watts, I'm just making up these numbers, then that probably the, is the sign that the pump is running dry. So we want to kill it. So that's how I would use the minimum and the maximum power in, uh, in this case. 
And I almost forgot to talk about the history function because it is still there. So the statistics is basically what was the what was earlier called, I think, uh, like a stopwatch or something. So you can measure your whatever arbitrary pe period. But if you come back to the three dots here up on the top right, and then you go history record, I think probably it should be called consumption history or just history, then you can see the actual consumption. And here uh, you see the consumption broken down by the days of the month. So again, this is a brand new device, so I don't really have any data on it, but uh, you, you see here it shows December. So obviously now it's the beginning of the December, but we don't have any graph. So you would have a bars for every single day when there was a usage and it would show kilowatt hours. And then based on the tariff that you have entered on the settings screen, it will also show you a monetary value. And as you can see, besides the current month, and you can use the up and down arrows on the top and the bottom of the screen to recall the same settings for the previous month. So I can go all the way back to August. So it looks like that you can go back to three or four months. That's the type of history which is stored. And again, you will get one data per day. So I don't have anything at the moment. And also there was yet another feature that I didn't talk about is the download records. So if I would have anything, I would just hit the download records. And then after a couple of seconds, I would get a message. Okay, it failed this time. Maybe it failed because I don't have any data, but you will get a message that a CSV file has been created. I'm using Android, so it saves the files in a directory on the SD card. Here you go. Um, I'm guessing on an iOS, it will be part of the application space or the fire space of this application. I'm going to leave purchasing links in the video description, but uh, that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.